Hey guys, so I got for you a camera review today. I got a new camera. Uh, it's one of Canon's newest mirrorless cameras, the Canon EOS M6. So what I'm going to talk about in this camera is not the specs specifically. I'll go over those really quick, just the high level ones. But I will talk about from a point of view of a vlogger or a YouTuber why I want this camera. Mostly as a traveler actually. So I'll go over the specs real quick. So what we got here on my cheat sheet, it comes with standard 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens. So nothing spectacular there. Small form factor obviously because it's mirrorless. Uh, it uses the EFM lens mounts. 24.2 megapixel APS-C CMOS sensor. So basically it has the same sensor that's in the 80D and the 70D, I believe. It uses the Digix 7 image processor, I believe. Yep. So it's in, I think, one of their newer image processors. And I do notice a difference. I'm shooting on my 70D right now. That picture quality, image quality on this is definitely better than the 70D, even though it's a smaller camera, in my opinion, for photos. Full HD, 1080p, video recording, uh, up to 60 frames per second. So not like great slow motion, but at least it's nice they've gone up to 60 frames. Does not have 4K, unfortunately. Canon, for whatever reason, still not doing that, which is really annoying to a lot of people who shoot on YouTube. Um, it has a three inch swivel screen like that. That's a key selling feature for me, and I'll talk about that more in a bit. And it has five axis in-body image stabilization. So instead of the IS being built into, say, the lenses on their uh, e, uh, EF or EFS lenses, it's actually in-body. I don't know too much about that, so don't quote me on that. Those are more specific uh, specifications that you can dig up. I'm going to talk about it from the point of view of why I got this camera. So it took me a little while. I was doing a bunch of research. I I narrowed it down to either the I believe it was the Sony the Sony RX100 Mark V or the Canon uh, G7X Mark II. Those are the two really popular cameras that are compact and really give good low light performance. The drawback is they don't have an external mic mount. So for vlogging and stuff, it's it the, you're, you're at the mercy of what's built into the camera while I think the Sony's not bad, the G7X is a little lacking. I wanted to buy this camera specifically or a camera for traveling. I want something small. I want something to do a little vlogging a little bit of picture shooting, so just to record my vacation. But I don't want to carry around, say, a 70D, 80D or anything like that because it's just heavy. Just my personal preference, I like to travel a little lighter. So I think I came to a good compromise with Canon's M6 mirrorless. So for me, as a part-time YouTuber, you know, for traveling, recording my videos, recording my pictures or taking pictures, this is a really good, I think, solution, and it's not heavy. You can almost fit this in a pocket. It fits in my winter jacket quite easily, but if you're traveling to more tropical or warmer destinations, um, you can't really pocket it, but it's not really heavy. It'll fit in a kit bag or something or a messenger bag. I really, really do like it, and when you take the lens off and you put the protective uh, covers on them, like it does travel really nice. The thing why I like this though is again it has the flip up screen so that if I want to frame myself for a selfie or not that I take a lot of selfies or for vlogging I want to document more of my vacations for you know my own posterity not necessarily to share on YouTube but at least I know where I'm at I just I think that's a really important feature now and I don't understand why some of Canon's higher end cameras sometimes don't have the flip out screen so I really or other companies for that matter so it really came down to I had to have a flip up screen I wanted good image quality and it needed to be a small form factor so I think the M6 kind of covers all that and another thing is I have a lot of other already lenses I already have a bunch of other lenses like some uh, wide angle lenses and telephoto lenses and like prime lenses having the ability to get an adapter so you can get an adapter like this guy here that will fit 
the existing lenses that I have, so let's say I have this telephoto lens, I can put this adapter on and it goes from the, I believe, the EFS uh, mount down to the EFM mount that's on the camera on the M6. It looks kind of ridiculous, but it's nice to have that option if I want. So that kind of makes it look pretty ridiculous. However, what I like about it is that all of the eye image stabilization and all of the auto focusing and everything works standard, no problem with this adapter. So this is a genuine Canon adapter and I picked it up for about a hundred bucks. So that just makes this camera a lot more versatile. I can take a few other lenses with me when I travel and I have some flexibility, but I don't have to haul around the big digital SLR. So that's a big bonus. The only thing that I can say that I'm really disappointed in Canon about this camera is you can't mount something in the hot shoe up here because, or at least you can't mount like a mic up here if you want to do vlogging, because when you do that, it obstructs the view of the, of the screen or it can't flip up all the way. And why that's an issue is when you flip it up, it reverses, which is great. But if you come back a little bit, it stops, it flips upside down again. So if you have something sitting here, it's going to obstruct that and it'll flip the image. So it's kind of going to be in reverse. So that's no good either. Um, so the screen only articulates up like that. You can't flip it out like a fully articulating screen, say like on my 70D that I'm shooting on right now. But I think it's a pretty good you know, design, compromise, it works well. So what I've done instead is I've mounted a mic on the side and there's some YouTube videos out there with, uh, with some ideas on how to remount mics on the side here. So I have a mic mounted on the side there with this little tiny guy. Um, I'll put some links in the description below of what I've used. Works really well, super, super happy with it. Um, works better than the onboard mic, of course. So I have, I've used this camera for about a month now. I really like this camera, it takes great images, super happy with the quality. Uh, it doesn't have the low light performance to say the Canon G7X, but that's because the F value on the kit lens isn't that good, whereas I think right out of the box, the Canon G7X has a lower F stop, so you're just getting in more light. So if you put in a really good lens, you'll probably get some better low light performance. And again, it has the Digic 7 image processor, um, so it works well in that respect good image quality. I like that it has all manual dials so you can control all of the settings, your um, f-stop, your um, your shutter speed. Uh, they have one dial here to control your, um, what do they call it, your exposure just with one button or one dial I should say. And I like that they're metal knurled buttons. They have really great feel. They're solid. Um, they're easy to, to grasp. Has a good grip on it, which isn't too bad. So just coming out again, why I got this camera, I think it'll make for a good vlogging camera. It's light, it's small, good image quality. And it also take decent pictures for when I'm traveling. So for a vlogger, I think this camera would be really, really great. Canon almost got it right with this. Unfortunately, no 4K support, which I know a lot of YouTubers probably want or people who shoot a lot of video. It would be nice to have that in a nice small form factor for whatever reason Canon left that out. You know, they probably want to segment their market a little bit, regardless. This also has dual pixel AF, like the 70D, the 80D, and the focusing on this is awesome. It doesn't have the electronic viewfinder built in, but you can add that on for an additional couple hundred dollars. Um, so you can get that viewfinder if, you, if that's what you like. I will miss that part because I have an SL1 that I travel with, which is a smaller um, digital SLR, but the the dual pixel AF for like vlogging and stuff or focusing in with the touch to focus is awesome. Canon, like I really, really like that dual pixel AF. It completely sold me on this camera as well. Besides the other um, functions that I've mentioned, the dual pixel AF compared to say the Canon G7X, which I know has some issues with focusing sometimes. 
this doesn't have that because of the dual pixel AF, or at least it's, it's less of an issue. Canon has finally included a built-in time-lapse mode into the camera, unlike some of their other cameras, say like my 70D. I've tried out this feature, it works really well. Here's a couple time lapses that I did and you just set the interval how long you want and you just let it go and it puts it all together for you. At the end you get a little tiny movie or a smaller movie than if you were to actually record out a whole length and then do it in post-production. Quite, quite like this feature. So uh, that alone makes this camera really, really useful too. So a few other things about this camera. It comes with an external charger, which is nice. Um, it's only got one slot for SD cards on, on the bottom, same spot where the battery goes in. It has an HDMI port. It has, let's see, what else here? USB connectivity and the mic input, of course. Um, has a flash, but I seldom ever use anything like that. It has Wi-Fi connectivity, works pretty well. I've tested it. I probably won't use that much. Might be nice when you're traveling if you want to upload a photo or something to Instagram or you want to share it. Uh, it is nice to connect to the Canon app and then just do it that way. Uh, it works well. I've used it. It also has built-in NFC. Um, and the batteries for it, I think, are the... Yeah, it's the LPE17, which I think is the same battery as Canon's Rebel line as well. So, overall, this camera, I really, really like it. Like I said, because I already had some existing lenses, I thought it was a, a really good fit uh, to be able to share some of the lenses with this when I travel, but I'll still have the smaller body. I can do vlogging, I can do, you know, I can take really nice travel pictures with this camera. So I think for me, as a part-time YouTuber, traveler, this camera is gonna be awesome for that. Like I said, I've been using it for a month and I really, really like it. So thanks for watching this review. It wasn't really a review, it's more just my opinion of this camera being great for probably traveling and vloggers or YouTubers. So thanks for watching. More videos on this channel and my other channel coming soon. Okay, till next time.